Brady. Welcome to Good Morning Football. We are live in New York City Friday, July 19th. My name is Kay D'Angelo. Oh, Mike Garofalo in the house. What's happening? Happy Friday. Casual Friday. Casual Friday. I love this short sleeve thing going on here. Yeah, see if I can pull it all year long. <laughs> short sleeve suits. That'll be a new thing. I'll be like Burleson. Listen I'll be to a... now talk and see what Mike, where Mike takes us. Go for it. <laughs> think I can carry the whole hour? Yeah, <laughs> Probably. I actually do think you yes. could. Hey, D'Angelo, what time is it? Time for the lead block. Lead block. There you go. This makes me so happy. Let's start right. in the AFC West with that guy. We just saw those highlights of the hurtling, the stiff arming, the electric, dynamic Melvin Gordon. He's entering the final year of his rookie deal, and he notified the team that he is prepared to sit out until a new deal is reached. And he sit down an interview with ESPN. Gordon said his teammates support his decision. Then they're all behind me. Uh, they're all, they're all, they all got my back. And, uh, you know, Phil reached out. Uh, Russell Coon reached out. I told a couple guys, um, you know, just in case this might happen. I just reached out to them. Uh, Pouncey, just a lot of the guys on the team. I let them know because I don't want it to be a surprise to them. Um, but they all told me, you know what, no matter what, you know, we don't really speak on contracts. You go do it, you know, what's best for you and your family. Just because, you know, we're going through contract, you know, issues right now don't mean I, you know, I want to get traded or, you know, just, I love being a charger. You know, I don't want to, I don't want them to feel like, you know, I don't want to be there. This is very interesting. It's an mm -hmm. intriguing dynamic between Melvin Gordon and the Chargers offense. Who needs the other more? Chargers need Melvin Gordon or he needs them the other way around? I think the Chargers need Melvin Gordon. Um, you think about Phillip Rivers being an aging quarterback in this league, um, a really good quarterback, but an aging quarterback who needs that run game. He needs that dynamic player that he can just hand the ball off to and watch them make something happen. Um, it's interesting because you saw how Le'Veon Bell, how everyone chimed in on his contract mm -hmm. situation, and it was a negative. But this is the way it's supposed to be. When you have a star player who's up to get paid, just as if it was – you getting paid or you getting paid, I'm going to support you as a player, as a brother, as a person in that locker room who's fighting with you and for you. I'm going to always want you to get your money. And so it was really weird in Pittsburgh how it unfolded, but it's really good to see in, uh, in Los Angeles that those guys have Melvin Gordon's back because he's going to need the support of them to feel like he can sit and wait because the uh, running back shelf life isn't very long. And so for this guy to actually know, hey, I need to go ahead and get some guaranteed mm -hmm. money in this contract, is very smart of him. And he was a fervent supporter of Le'Veon Bell and his decision. Yes, he yes. was. Mm -hmm. And uh, my understanding is that he and Ezekiel Elliott have kind of been comparing notes and they've been in communication because these are two guys that are fighting the same battle right now. I can kind of answer this question both ways because, ah, oh, running back, you know, run, the team can find another running back. Austin Eckler, you look at the production. Blah, blah, blah. He's a good okay. player. But, but, but the other way is this guy has the second most touches in the NFL since 2015. He's got over 1,000 touches. Uh, so he's an <laughs> integral part of the Team. And he's also a guy who he's been banged up and he's played through it. Yep. And he had an injury last year. Remember, they had the short turnaround for that Thursday night game against the Chiefs. He was pushing to play in that game. Mm -hmm. He really wanted to play and they held him back. And I, I do believe that that's why uh, it, it was important for him to get this message out ahead of training camp because he's been a team guy. He's been a guy that hasn't rocked the boat. But he wanted to let them know that at some point there's going to be some pushback because I want mine. And it's okay to be selfish sometimes because this is a business. So that's why I think Gordon really made that stance here. I do feel, and I'm not around the teams as much as you are, this came out of nowhere for me as, a, as you know somebody who really wants to see the Chargers have success. I can't say that they won't have success without Melvin Gordon because they were 4-0 without him last year. They had success with Austin Eckler. But then it comes down to that game up against the Patriots. And they didn't have him at their disposal. And at that point, we saw how quickly their playoff dreams and Lombardi dreams slipped away from them. They need Melvin Gordon to win the Super Bowl. I do believe that. There you go. And in a win now mode, I mean, could they survive without him? Have success, yes, but the ceiling is so much lower when they don't have a dynamic character. And a guy the team clearly loves. Like for the, the days leading up to training camp, when you're with your family, you're packing up to be outwardly. Um, expressive about your support, Russell Okun getting in there, defending him at tweets that weren't even directed at him, things that he just saw on his timeline, he decided to speak out. Mm -hmm. That means a lot to me as, if, as somebody who's a fan of the NFL and players and getting what they deserve. And, and Russell Okun, a big NFL PA presence. He's part mm -hmm. of that executive committee. He's part of the CBA negotiations. He's represented himself on contract talks in the past. I know he understands completely whenever a player wants to get his. So it's good to have that support in your corner. Melvin Gordon certainly raising a lot of question marks for these charges. 
chargers. What's the one question you cannot wait to have answered throughout training camp and into mm. the season in the AFC West? Mm. For me, it's it's. Can I go ahead and go? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna jump in. This is a confusing division. Um, for me, it's it's the Raiders. Um, you know, I want to see what John Gruden can do with this offense. Um, you know, he's 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 brought some new weapons in. Um, you think about Antonio Brown, um, probably the biggest name, Terrell Williams. Uh, another great receiver, Josh Jacobs. This offense, Trent Brown, the offensive uh, tackle, they've put pieces in place on this offense to be very productive. They were the 28th ranked offense last year at 18 points a game. You can't win many football games scoring 18 points. They upgraded that offense in a conference that scores a, a conference. Here I go again. Mm -hmm. In a division that scores a lot of points. And so I. I mean, I want to see this offense roll, and I think John, you know, another year out of the booth and, you know, coaching full-time, I think he kind of shakes some of that rust off, and I'm excited to see the, uh, mm. the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, at some point, and listen, all eyes were toward Vegas for them, but yeah. at some point you got to start being competitive yeah. and capitalize. you got the three first-round picks, you start to capitalize on them. Um, to me, and we, we touched on this briefly before, uh, the, the Chiefs' defense. I mean, that was what stopped them. Couldn't make a stop when they needed to make a stop mm -hmm. late in that AFC Championship yeah. game. Now you've got Steve Spagnuolo in. They've got a number of different parts they're changing out. D Ford goes out. Frank Clark comes in. They feel like Clark is more of a, a complete pe player and somebody that can fit better in Steve Spagnuolo's scheme right there. Yeah. So can this defense be more aggressive? Look, they don't have to be lights out, okay? They just got to be good. They gotta stop. Middle yeah. of the pack <laughs> would be good enough for this team, you would Heck think. Yeah. And just to make the stops at the right point of the game, uh, Spags in the past, you look at some of those Giants defenses, they made the stops when they mattered yeah. when they were winning those titles. Well said. Or winning those games. Broncos, I've been getting skewered by Broncos fans all week long and talking about wanting their defense to play at their potential. So I'm done with the defense. The real question with this squad is who's starting more games? Joe Flacco or Drew Locke? Who's starting outwardly? I, I don't know. I don't know what you, uh, Joe Flacco is going to look like on the field. So between those two, offensively, that, that's just the biggest question. I mean, this is a team that's really focused on their defense in years past. They need to play like 2015 Broncos defense as well, but I don't know. We're shaking that tree. I don't know what the metaphor was. I don't really, that confuses me. I have a question about some that. Fruit. Yeah, bear some fruit. Who's going to be starting more games? This is a competition, in my opinion. It's not Flacco handing it over. He's not going to hand it over easily. He's a Super Bowl MVP. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I was leaving out I the mean, you killed it. Up. You killed it, Kay. All you're absolutely right. What are your Sometimes questions? you just drop that mic, Kay. About the AFC West. <laughs> Mike dropped. Did you just use your own name to pun the... Okay. All right. We got to go. Madden ratings. You a big Madden guy, Mike? Uh, not since I was... Yeah, I'm huge. Huge. I used to be until they dropped my ranking. And <laughs> <was> like, <laughs> there you go. I'm the rankings game. I give you two a nine.